we do a number of services, certainly. Uh, one of the things we love to do is educate the public, or educate the community on how to become a healthier being. And express health, not only today and tomorrow, but in the years to come in your life. Quality of life is the important thing. Because what is the number one asset that you have access to? It's your health. It's not your home, it's not your cars. It's, it's actually your health. Because without it, all the rest of it doesn't matter. And that's what we want to make sure that we are putting in the utmost of our lives, is how are we making plans to do that? One of my favorite things to always say is you plan to retire, you plan to buy a car, you plan to buy a house. What have you done to plan for your health? That's the big question. And so you want to make sure that you have those plans in place, because otherwise, it's like getting in the car and driving here when you've never been here and not knowing where it is. So you're guessing, and that's not what you want to have. So that's a very big point. Today, we're going to talk about diabetes. And that is a very, very powerful thing to discuss. Uh, it's a very fearful thing. A lot of times people think that, that diagnosis when you receive it is a one-way ticket. And sometimes it can be, and sometimes it doesn't have to be. And it's the ways that you treat your body when you get that type of scenario are very important to understand what are the scenarios that you're going to go through, what are the treatment options that you have, what are the pros and cons and those types of things. And that's kind of what we've discussed today a little bit with everybody, it's those types of things. So when we take a look at that, I, the, first, the first thing to start with is, is everybody understand really what diabetes is? So you have two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, diabetes is actually where your pancreatic cells, the beta cells in your pancreas, do not produce insulin. There has been a modification, a shift in the, you know, basically the, the cell structure itself has changed and exists as a different type of cell that no longer produces the insulin that the brain calls for. And so that is a very thing, big thing to understand. Now what could cause that? That's always the big question when everybody hears about diabetes. They're like, what's going to cause that? How can I, and we ask that question for what? To stay away from it, right? We don't want to, if I don't have a cute cause, I can stay away from it, I don't have the problem. So one of the things that is known to cause this is viruses. It, it creates an autoimmune response in the body, and that autoimmune response goes back and attacks those cells, and it changes the structure of the DNA of those cells, and at that point in time, they're no longer producing insulin. So viruses are a big component of type 1 diabetes. The other thing is genetically modified organisms. GMOs can actually go into the body, and it can modify cell structure, DNA, and everything in the body. And so when you're dealing with those types of things on a repetitive basis, this can create this outcome. This can actually, long term, you can have <coughs> chronic exposure to those types of things that can lead to type 1 diabetes as well. Heavy metals. Heavy metals is another big play. They're toxic to the body. Some metals, when they get into the cell structure, it's almost impossible to pull them out. We pull that chelation. It's almost impossible to get them back out of the cell structure. And so they can be very toxic to the environment of how the cell works and what it's doing. And that's really what we're talking about is when you talk about breaking down disease structures and pathology in the body, you're talking about how the cells are working in the body, because that's what it is. It's an abnormal cell function, and we want to make sure we take care of that. Vaccines are another thing that can create it. It's amazing. You start doing research and finding out what's in the vaccines that they give us. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that can create a lot of health problems. And again, it doesn't do it across the board to everybody, but there's people that are susceptible to these types of things, and it can produce some modifications to how their body functions not a very good outcome at all in those scenarios. And then the other thing is like food, like wheat, cow's milk, soy, those types of things can create it as well. Because what it does is it starts breaking down the, the stomach lining and the body creates a leaky gut syndrome and it actually starts an inflammation response and that can actually create a lot of problems in how your body is assimilating nutrients, getting it into the bloodstream and starving out that system and creating that type 1 diabetes as well. Yes? I want to ask one of the more common uh, shots we all get, the flu shot. Is that something to worry about that has? Absolutely. Um, I will always suggest that you get information, you do research, look at the ingredients, look at the warning labels on those shots and determine exactly what you need to do with your particular challenges because everybody has a different need for that. You know, they say always to have healthcare providers and have individuals that are in the elderly states of their life or geriatric populations need to have that more. But there's a lot of ingredients in there that are very scary. Formaldehyde for one, that's what we embalm dead bodies with. That's a, actually a major ingredient in antifreeze as well in cars. So there's a lot of things in there. There's, and again, I, I talked about heavy metals here. You're talking about aluminum and those types of things are in them as well. And those are heavy metals going into the body that can create a lot of problems, including not only diabetes, but dementia and Alzheimer's. So that's a pretty scary thing. When you talk about heavy metals, like is that, 
that only from things like injections, or is that in some of the chemicals? It's in, all, it's in your environment. And I'll actually cover that in a little bit when I talk about your environmental toxins. But good question. I'll come. I'll cover that in a few minutes. So the other type of diabetes is type two. Type 2 diabetes is that insulin is produced in your body, pancreatic, pancreatic cells are doing their job, it's not a problem at all, but it can't get into the cells. Now why in the world would it not be able to get into your cells, right? That would be the big question. There's two major players involved in that. Um, there's two, two actual um, hormones that are involved in that process as well, and I'll talk about that. But what would be the cause of it not getting into your cells? Well, having a poor diet and being overweight is one big key. That's one thing that will really affect type 2 diabetes, and there's some reasons for that I'll cover in a few minutes. Having high levels of inflammation. We talked about an inflammation response. That can actually create a problem as well. That can go either way. That can create type 1 and type 2. And so chronic inflammation is very, very critical in the body if you have that state in the body. Limiting a sedentary lifestyle. That's basically sitting on the couch and not doing anything. Uh, you have 208 joints in your body. You're made to move. Move. And that's the thing. When you don't move, you lose. That's really the case. And so you want to make sure that you do that. Um, excessive high amounts of stress. I mean, how many people live a stressful life at some point <laughs> in time? Family stress, work stress, it's all there. And those actually can play a big role in how your body is actually functioning. And it can lead to type 2 diabetes. Excessive high blood pressure. That's another component. And then we talk about the hormonal condition. And these are things like hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, polycystic ovary syndrome, Cushing's syndrome, Addison's. All these types of things can lead to a secondary diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Not a good thing, because it's certainly not something you want to add to the list. You know, we don't want to be in that component. Uh, being exposed <coughs> to toxins, viruses, and harmful chemicals, I'll cover that in much more detail here in a few minutes. Taking certain medications, like those that disrupt insulin in the process. There are actually medications that disrupt this pathway and get in the way of it. A lot of people don't realize that until it's too late because then they become diabetic and they get on the medications for diabetes and they're on that road of stabilization and we don't want to do that. And recently we're finding that even vitamin A deficiency, eventually vegetarian is another big thing, vitamin A deficiency can lead to this as well. And so we're finding that there's even a deficiency involved in that. Does anybody know the impacts of diabetes? How is it really impacting our everyday lives? Because a lot of people to say, I'm not diabetic, it's not really going to affect me. Does anybody know that what it's like? 30 million people right now are diagnosed as diabetic in the United States. But here's the kill. 34 million are actually di diagnosed as pre-diabetic, which means we're not there yet, but we're in the classification, but we're not normal anymore either. First blood testing, we're not normal, but we're not fully diabetic. 7.2 7 million people out there have it, and they don't even know it yet, which is really scary when you have those types of things. 150,000 kids are diagnosed with it which is scary as well. And that is increasing quickly because our, 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 ch our, our children are actually, a lot of cases, sicker than what we were when we were kids. And it's a scary thing. We actually spend over $245 billion in costs related specifically to diabetic care. And that's kind of, that's where it really affects all of us, whether we have it or not, because it's driving healthcare costs. It's driving it up, and that's not a good thing because we're all paying for that. And so we've got to make sure we do things for that. On average, an individual that has a diagnosis of diabetes spends $13,700 more a year on health care than somebody who doesn't have it. So it's a big play in somebody's budget. That's a, to a lot of people, that's a big hit. And that's not a good thing. And it actually it, it, it increased our cost 2.3 times for the things that we have to do. So it really is a big concern to have that. And then when you have diabetes, one of the things you have to understand is it leads to other problems in the body because it starts to break down other systems in the body. So comorbidities are cardiovascular disease, one of the number one killers in the US. Heart disease as well, stroke, diabetic ketoacidosis. This is a big word, because right now one of the big fire words for weight loss is ketogenic. And so ketoacidosis is what makes doctors so afraid of ketogenic diets, is because uh, they panic, because all they really understand is dealing with ketoacidosis, which is a very dangerous state in the body. And so there's a big separation in those types of things. Leg amputations, obesity, which is a big issue uh, in our country, loss of feeling in the extremities, hands, feet, that happens as well. The inability to work or walk or do anything in later stages of life. All your life with a diabetic in the later stages can be very challenging. And that's not a good thing either. So it's good to understand how that actually affects it. So one of the modern day treatments that we know, it's important to understand where we're sitting when we do a, a diabetic uh, a, a talk. Understand the model and strategy of the current treatment program. How many know that 
the current system that we have in the modern medical society is to stabilize. It's to manage and monitor. That's really what our strategy is. Our medications and all the things that we use are meant to stabilize. So they're rarely meant to cure or resolve. And that's a really big statement to understand is that we have to use those types of things when we need it. It's the best system available. I always say, our medical system is the best system in the world for acute care. When you're having a heart attack, when you're in ketoacidosis from your diabetics, when you just realize you have it, there's nothing better out there for what we can do. We know how to help you and save a life. That's not a problem. But when we take that next step into prevention, when we take that next step into resolution, that's when we really start to lose traction, and we really don't want to have that. Um, we want to make sure that we support our subsystems. So when we actually look to resolve and cure, we have to understand, you know, I talk, I do a lot of talks on Facebook, and when I talk about thyroid or adrenals, or I talk about diabetes, you have to understand that this is a system in the body. It's not one organ, it's not the pancreas. Most people think, oh, it's the pancreas, it's shot, and that's what we concentrate on. There's a lot of other players in the game. We have to make sure we understand the players and how to take care of those players as well. Remember, diabetics suffer from many health issues due to the treatment today. And then one of the things I'm talking about is the current treatment of diabetes, when you're using high acting insulin, medium acting insulin, you're using uh, low acting insulin for overnight care, those types of things, over a long period of time, the strategies that they use create a lot of highs and a lot of lows, and it wears out organs and systems in the body. It just does, it's, it's high mileage. And that's usually what you see with later stages of diabetics is their body is showing high mileage. And we want to make sure that we, all, we can get away from that as much as possible. Um, type 1 diabetes, it's an external supply of endogenous insulin. Uh, there's a lot of manual calculation to it. You know, that's one of the other things about it is it really isn't perfected science. There's a lot of things to it that we calculate. You know, these are the carbs, these are the sugars, I have to make these many points. And, and these, that's what they're still teaching today in hospitals is that system. There's a lot of technology and a lot of advancements coming, but they're still teaching the basics of what they've taught from since the 1950s. It's, it, it's, we've got to make some changes. For many, it's uh, you know it's an estimation and it's a guessing game. You know, and I've watched that happen with a lot of patients in, in my office. It creates wear on our systems. I mentioned that, and it's time leads other forms of disease in the body begin. The other thing is it's expensive. When you take an individual that's on these types of insulins, it's expensive to do that. Um, it's a big life change for a lot of people. I mean, I have patients that spend $850 to $1,200 a month on insulin. Not to mention, not to mention all the supporting casts and things that they need. So it's, it, when you talk about this, is a big life change when you talk about diabetes. And so when we can do other things to improve the body's response, improve how the body's functioning, I always tell people, I'm not going to eliminate your diabetes. If I do, that's fantastic. But if I can just make enough change where you go way down in your usage of the treatment plan, and those types of things that your body utilizes what you're using more effectively, I've added years to the life, and that's what I want to do. So that's a big thing. Uh, when we talk about type 2 diabetes treatments in the modern day, there's basically a couple, there's two real strategies. There's what they call an alpha glucosidase inhibitor. Basically, that's what you are familiar with. It's called, many people might know it by Agravase or Meginol. It's the sub of the prescriptions that they get. And what's this do? It helps your body break down starchy foods and table sugar. This effect lowers your blood sugars and it helps your body break it down. Really, that was so. Let's think about that. If you're taking medic medication so you can break something down, what system are we talking about? Thank digestion. Oh. Digestion, right? How do you break down food? It's in your digestive tract. So we already understand that, that treatment protocol is actually looking at a different system to help fix the problem, right? So that that is a step of understanding what we can do. So how important would di diet become and nutrition and what you're putting in your body ingredients? That's where the game starts to play. Because now we're like, okay, if we're going to go after digestion, and that's bringing, that brings my blood sugar down, then we need to really clean that area up in the body. Uh, the other one is called pingonides. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but they actually metformin is the big name. Everybody knows metformin. That's a big player in what they do out there. And that is actually to decrease how much sugar your liver makes. That's what that medication does. It also decreases how much sugar your intestines absorb, and it makes your body more sensitive to insulin. So it actually tries to reignite the insulin receptors on the cell so it'll be more active in taking it in when it's in your body. Um, and it also helps your muscles absorb glucose as well. Amazing stuff, right? So when you're going on those things, so think about those things. Look at all the systems that they're working with. So we understand that it's not just a pancreatic issue. It's not just those types of things. There's a lot of other things at play here that we have to understand. 
the big thing to understand is when you're on metformin, if you're changing all those things in the body, what are you doing? At the cellular level of the body, you're manipulating how the cells communicate. And if you're doing this, one of the things I always teach about using medications in a situation is understand it's global. It's in your body. It's not just going to go and affect your pancreas. It's not just going to go and affect the blood system. It's going to affect everything in the body. So its effect on the liver is the same thing on every other organ out there, right? So you have to understand that when you take those types of things, although they might help in one area, these aren't little things that go around and say, oh, there's the liver, I'm just going there, that's my home. No, it's all over the body, and we have to understand that. You know, is there another way? I always teach and treat my patients in four critical areas when it comes to diabetes. And what that is, is the first one is to resolve hormone, metabolic, and organ imbalances. That's one of the most important things you can do because that is your foundation. That is how your body is functioning. So we have to actually rebalance that, resolve any imbalances that are there. We have to identify specific foods, minerals, and nutrition for support. <coughs> that has got to be part of it. There is no other thing in our lives, research-based, that can be changed to create more health in the body than nutrition. It's proven. There's nothing else that can touch it. Uh, it it's just the most widely researched component of healthcare is nutrition, and every single time when you go from something that's toxic and not good for you to very healthy nutrients, the body is an amazing turnaround on that. That's a good point, and my question, you bring up a question for me. When there's so much information on nutrition and what's right, how, how do you weed through it, though? How do you know what's right for, because I'm different from you and, and Absolutely. you with you, so there's just so much information and often contradictory. Yeah. So it's how always covered. How do you know? You know at this point, with the access that our time has with, with information, you can always find a study to support something. You can typically find a study that re refuted as well. So you're very confused. That is a great question. And here's the thing. You have to find out what you need specifically. Now, how can you do that? Can you find out specifically what you need to eat reading uh, a book of what somebody else did to be successful? No, that was their body. It's their unique self, so you can't do that. How about what your mom and dad did that was successful? It may not work. Now, while you have some similar genetics to them, it may not work in your body because you are individually different. We have to bring technology into play, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that because technology is key. At the end of this talk, I'll talk about some technologies we use and why we use them to be specific. And so, because my big thing in my office is we don't guess, we test. We don't, we don't ever take guesses. So, we have that. Elimination of toxins in the body is a huge component. Toxicity is a rampant thing, and we have to eliminate it. And then the other big thing is activity. I talked about movement. It is key. Activity for metabolic healing is a major play in the transformation of your body. And we've got to make sure that we're doing this as well. <coughs> so let's talk about hormone. Balancing and resolving hormone and metabolic and organ systems. The hormones left in insulin are what I'm talking about. If you haven't heard of those, they may be new to you, they may not be. Insulin is made in the pancreas, and its job is to open the door. It actually opens the door of the cell and lets the glucose go right on by. That's its only goal in the body, is to do that. Leptin is made in our fat cells. Did you hear that? It's made in our fat cells. So we do need a little fat in our body, absolutely. Because leptin is one of the things that tells your brain that we're full. It stops your system. So if that system is breaking, here's why that's important with type 2 diabetes. If that system is not, is not working properly, your brain never gets the message that you're, you're full. And if that happens, then you overeat. You have too much in your body, and your body becomes toxic. Because you've got to remember that if you have a deficiency in your body and you solve that deficiency, then you've created a solution. And if you resolve issues in the body, it works properly. If you throw a bunch of stuff in your body, even if it's good for you, and your body isn't deficient in it, guess what it becomes? It's a toxin. Because your body has to get it out. It has to deal with it. And so that's a major component. And so you've got to make sure that that's healthy as well. So those are the types of things. The takeaway in this is addressing leptin resistance and insulin resistance is vital when you're taking care of a diabetic situation. If you don't do the things to break through the metabolic miscommunication at the cell level of the body, uh, that is, is happening with these two hormones. You're really going to be chasing, chasing your tail and running into the wall. That's really what you're going to do. You don't want to do those things. Um, the four main organs that are involved in this system with diabetes and re regulation of blood sugar is the liver, the thyroid, the adrenal glands, and the pancreas. Wow, those are some big players. Matter of fact, we could actually look at each one of those and say, these are, there's 
some major problems in each one of these categories. And you also have to understand that each one of these, when you talk about thyroid issues, it's a system. Adrenals, it's a system. Hollow liver function, it's a system. There's other things that affect it. And so in your body, it's basically a metabolism. It's all leading to how your body is controlling all the scenarios in your body. So you have that. It's vital that we address supporting these organs in our strategy. We have to do that. Uh, bringing balance can aid in reducing the possible el eliminating the use of medications because you can do that. And I've done that time and time again. I have patients that I have eliminated their diagnosis of diabetes. I have patients that have come in and have been diabetic and on three and four different insulins, doing all kinds of things like that, and got them down to where they're on one. And that's a victory too. I mean, we talk about the cost of insulins. That's a huge victory for somebody's life. And it adds quality of life because they're not going through a lot of the wear and tear that they were before. So it's very good to do that. How about identifying specific foods? This goes back to your question right there. You know, we always say let food be thy medicine. That's why you chose the route that you chose is because usually that's what leads you to make that choice. Um, so not as easy as to stop, you know, not as easy as just stop eating candy and eat the greens. It's not that easy because those things may not be the best thing for your body. Um, you are unique mentioned earlier and you need to know what are the best foods for you for example for me salmon is not a good food for my metabolism it really disrupts how my body functions and I know that because some of the programs that I've gone through in the office have identified that as an issue and so amazing because how many people eat salmon for omegas how many eat, you know there's a lot of good benefits of that nutritious fish but not for this guy here I can't have that I have to go to other sources for that but I know that and that's what's really cool is what do you know about yourself that's one of the major issues across the board for all of our health issues, is you don't know you. You don't know what's good for you, what's bad for you. We're guessing in a lot of cases. And so we've got to make sure we start dialing in and using technology and testing to make sure that we know that we know what it is. Same thing with oils, herbs, and supplements. How many people have taken something because my mom had it, it was a really good deal, or my best friend got it, man, did they look great when they were on this, I'm going to get it. And it didn't work. You know, there's a lot of times that that happens. And I can tell you there's people that I know and patients that I have, and you can open up the door of their cabinet, and they've got tons of stuff sitting in there that they quit using because it didn't work. And what led them to do that? So you've got to make sure that you are very specific. Make sure the approach is specific to you and is developed by an expert, someone who understands physiology, somebody who has gone to school and has learned how this stuff works at a cellular level in the body. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with that huge thing of all these things that don't work, probably more health problems that can lead you astray. I actually have a patient that came originally from my diet program that I have in my office. He decided to go a different route with an individual that wasn't trained, and he actually did. In the process, I treated him for some other things with another service called chiropractic in my office, and as I was treating him, he, he's, his glasses changed twice as I was talking, you know, taking care of him over a period of a month. And he actually had five prescription changes on his eyeglasses in a month. And his optometrist said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I've been doing this diet, and it, you know, I've been losing weight, but I'm not feeling that great and everything else. And he said, you need to go to your primary care. There's something really wrong. There's something really wrong going on in your body. Type 2 diabetic. Just like that caused from the program that he was on, because it was such a toxic program that he was doing. So it's very uh, uncomfortable to see those types of stories. So don't just go to the GNC counter person and ask them what you need. <laughs> Typically, they're not very well trained in what really is going on in the body. They know the marketing of the products that they're selling. And that's really what we end up with. So we don't want to do that. So one of the other big things I talk about is elimination of toxins in our bodies. How can we do that? This leads to your question earlier that you were talking about with heavy metals and those types of things. We have over 80,000 toxins by Mars every single day. Did you know that? Did you realize that? That's amazing. That's 80,000 attacks on your immune system every day, minimum, that we have. It's in what you eat, it's in what you drink, it's in what you breathe, it's in what you touch. A lot of people don't realize even the lotions and things that you put on your body, 22 seconds to the bloodstream. That's all you have to get it off. <laughs> and so what's it? What are these ingredients? You know, when I, one of my favorite things is when I talk in, in the groups that I do, and I'll have somebody come up and say, I eat organic, I'm cleaning up, and I think that's fantastic. Especially when it's a female, I'll look at her and say, what do you do for your cosmetics? What do you mean? It's criminal what's in some of that stuff, and the women have been using it for years and years and years because they're very loyal to a brand. And so, really you have to realize what you're putting on your body is just as important as what you're putting in your body. 
and that's a major play as well. The products you use are heavy toxin, so leave the ingredients. Clean chemicals, reduce environmental toxins, reduce what you're around, smokers, those types of things. They have an effect on your health as well. That's a big play, and you have to understand that. Are you in a clean environment when you're at work all day? You know, you're at work, if you have a job, you're working, you're in an office environment, you're there eight hours a day, more than you're at home, typically sometimes. And what's that environment look like? What are they cleaning that? What is the air system like? You know, what are there pollutants around you? Is there chemical processes for manufacturing happening? There's a lot of things that can affect you. And you won't realize it today or tomorrow, but over a prolonged exposure, it's gonna get you down the road, and you don't wanna have that. You want to know about your environment so you can understand what you need to do to clean it up, to detox and do those types of things. What can we do for metabolic healing as far as activities? We talk about mood. Getting into the gym is a big move for a lot of people. Some people love it, some people hate it. And that's really a big thing. Um, but the understanding, you have to make sure that the exercise you're doing is right for you. Just like what you eat, the exercise has to be right for you as well. Because you have to understand that there's different metabolic states that happen when you exercise. And a lot of people don't understand this concept. You know, because it relates to your strategy of how you can get results. You know, there's anaerobic and there's aerobic. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. A lot of people probably heard of aerobics before. But aerobic exercise and anaerobic exercise is very important to understand. Because aerobic exercise increases oxygen in your body. Creates, creates an opportunity for your body to actually do some healing, clean, detoxify. There's a lot of great things that happens with that. That's at a certain level of exercise. If you keep pushing the intensity, you go into an anaerobic state, that's where you actually start pulling the oxygen away from your cells. You start toxifying your body more. You start putting it into a survival state. That's not a good, healthy exercise for you to do. So you have to make sure that you're in a balance. And you can do that with simple heart rate monitoring. That's why that's become such a rage in a lot of the, ex uh, in the, in the training and things that people do for triathlons and marathons and all those things. Is, they're really watching that because it tells them what their body's doing, how to feed themselves as they go through the process. Um, fat burning versus starvation for fuel. There's an area of exercise that you can get into yourself into a fat burn. There's a metabolic state of fat burn that you can reach with the proper exercise. You can't just go in the gym and start running a mile and a half or five miles or run for an hour on a treadmill and think, okay, I went through. You probably went through all the states and didn't even realize it. And so really what did you do to your body? You know, it's destiny. And you don't want to do that. So you're doing the same thing that you do with your medications or your supplementation, or you've got to make sure that you understand what you're doing and what is the result, keeping the end in mind. So those are some very important things. In our office, we can utilize some very specific things to help patients with that type of a thing. And it goes back to technology. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. You know, for example, addressing hormone imbalances and metabolic and organic organ imbalances. How can you test that? Well, there's ways. We use biocommunication. We use electrodermal testing. Uh, there's ways to understand. We use hair testing. We use blood testing. There's a lot of ways that we go through the process of identifying where your system imbalances are. How are the organs? There's ratios in the minerals that we can use to tell how adrenals and thyroids are running. There's really some cool stuff out there that we can use. And we're not guessing. We can really determine what's going on in your body specific foods, minerals, and nutritional support. It goes back to technology. I have specific scans for using biocommunication. And so for people who don't understand what biocommunication is, that's actually a, a contact between you and a machine that's gonna actually stimulate into your body and ask your cells basic questions and get a response on how they respond to those types of scenarios. So with that, I can do hundreds of bits of information a second and find out from your body what's going on and what are the imbalances. That's pretty cool stuff. And that technology has actually been around since the 1940s because you know what they created for originally? Lie detector testing. That's how they detect lies. And so we've taken it much further, but that's an option for you to understand. Yes, we can actually look at how your cell structures respond to foods. So that's a really good thing. So it gives us an inclination. That's a great step because now you're not guessing. Now you have something in your access to say, this is the best stuff I can use. And we have that. Um, how do you eliminate toxins in the body? You know, that's another great thing. You've got to go through some detox programs. You've got to do some things. And there's an order that you want to go through in that process. A lot of people jump in and they'll do specific, I'm going to detox my liver. Well, if you're not going through the specific order that you want to go through, what you end up doing is you end up moving toxins from one area of your body to another because you're just not getting them out. 
and that's the process of what you want to do. You know, if you go through and you detoxify your liver and they say, well, I'm going to do a digestive cleanse, and your digestive cleanse, guess where that's going? It's going in the liver. <laughs> so you've just toxified it again. So you've got to make sure you have somebody, and that goes back to having an expert, getting involved with someone who really understands nutrition and physiology and how the body runs to make sure you have the right steps in play. So you have that. Um, specific types of exercise, again, there's some great things. You've got to talk about, some, so where is your level of exercise now? Have you never gotten off the couch? Well, then you're not going to go run a 5K tomorrow. I hope not. That would be a pretty detrimental thing for your life. But you know, what are the steps that you need to go from here to here with your exercise? And I've seen patients do some great things. And there's some great trainers that can help that as well. So there's some great things you can do with exercise to really take the foundation of your body to another level. And that's really cool as well. So the EDS testing, this really is a cool story with EDS testing. It's electrodermal testing, very similar to biocommunication. It's more specific in certain areas, and that's what we use it for. And when it comes to diabetes, one of the things we talk about is viruses. is a major cause. It can cause pancreatic shell function shift. And so when we look at that, we can actually use EDS testing, and we can determine what funguses, viruses, parasites, and things are challenging your body. So you don't guess. And we have a specific protocol you'll go on based on your results to take care of that in the body. And even to test worms if you want to get rid of those. So it's really, really interesting. It helps the removal of cellular interference uh, in the body too. So it helps with that microcommunication at the cellular level. It coordinates with specific formulas to optimize your body's communication system. So there's some really cool things that are out there that you can use to shift and change how the body works. And that's the key. It's a key is to understand specifically what you need as an individual being to make sure that you're the best you can be. All right, any questions? And I'll answer the bunch as I went through. Hopefully I got you, did I answer your questions? <coughs> Good deal? Super, super. Anything else? No questions, Laura? I thought I'd definitely get one from you. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask some personal ones, uh, yeah. one to one with you. Okay, no problem, no problem. <laughs> she does. Um, can I use your story? Is that okay? So Laura and Leah are two of my patients here. And uh, great story is Laura here is a type 1 diabetic. And when she came to my office, she was already here working out. And she was doing everything. And she came and said, look, I'm stuck. I'm not where I want to be. I'm stuck. I can't get here. And her husband, this, this poor guy got dragged along the whole way, right? <laughs> but he had a lot of health issues as well. And he was challenged. And I met with both of them. And we made some very specific plans for their lives. And the really cool thing is, uh, it's a great example. No, we didn't get her off of her, uh, her diabetic insulin all the way. But we made some major changes in the use of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the really cool thing for her is actually, if you use the medical def 